Now the question is, next question is, are there prophets? Swali la pili nite, kunao manabi. Now this person asks this passage, 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 20 to 21. Hey, uyu kitabu cha petero wa pili. 2 Peter chapter Chapter 1. Petero wa pili, mlangu wa kwanza, sura ya kwanza, mstari wa ishirini hali ishirina moja. What it says is, this passage says is that we cannot interpret the prophecies in the Bible with our own interpretation, with a human interpretation. Now this is, this is about interpret now there are two different areas. First about the interpretation of prophecies. For me, people should be very careful to interpret prophecies. You might have heard online some people say, oh, the Antichrist has come. People will say, oh, someone in a, a right now a world leader, he is an Antichrist. Or some people say, oh, the sign of the beast has come. Na mwingine atasema kwamba zile ishara ya ya mpiga Kristo imeshakuja. Now for things like this I think we should we all should be careful. Kwa mambo kama haya nafikiria kwamba ni lazima tuwe makini. We read the Bible carefully. What does it say about the fulfillment of the prophecy? Tusome Biblia vizuri tuelewe kwamba ni nini ilichokuwa hitimisho la manabii. Because there are people online they look for all kinds of fulfillment. Kuna watu ambao wanatafuta hitimisho za kila aina. I think sometimes they look for reputation. The people say oh he has interpretation, special interpretation of the of the Bible. Na fikiria kwamba watu kwa sambuli hii ni wale watu wanaotafuta watu wanaosema kwamba huyu mtu kwa kweli ako na ufunuo zaidi wa unabii. And also there are some people who make prophet prophecies that don't come true. Kuna watu ambao wanatoa unabii ambao hauwezi ukaitimia. So I want to say be very careful in the interpretation of prophecies. Si tunasema kwamba lazima uwe makini zaidi katika kufafanua manabii. Do not believe any any prophet that says I'm a prophet. Usiwahi amini nabii yoyote kwa sababu anatoa unabii. It has his you know it has to be verified. Ni lazima unabii ule ambao anautoa uwe unabii ambao unadhihirika wazi. The Bible is very clear on certain things about the end of Christ that ends the signs of the end of the world. Biblia ina nakili wazi wazi kuhusu mpinga Kristo na ishara zinazoonyesha kwamba mwisho wa siku umefika. We should remember what the Bible says and then look for the time when this Prophecies are fulfilled. Ni lazima tukumbuke kile ambacho kimeandikwa kwenye Biblia, alafu tuwe tayari kutambua wakati mwisho wa kile kilichoandikwa kwenye Biblia unapofika. And then the next question is, are there prophets in this world now? Na jambo swali lingine ni kwamba je, kuna unabii katika ulimwengu wa kisasa? In the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 17 on. Katika kitabu cha Matendo ya Mitume mbili mstari wa 17 it talks about the Holy Spirit being poured out upon His people. And your children will prophesy. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it talks about different spiritual gifts. Including the spiritual gift of prophecy. So according to the Bible, prophecy doesn't stop. The Bible doesn't say the prophecy will stop. Actually, in the book of Acts chapter 2, when it talks about the Holy Spirit descending upon the people, it talks about it until the day when the day of the Lord will come. Inazungumza inasema kufikia ile siku ambayo Yesu Kristo atakapokuja. That means the work of the Holy Spirit and prophecy will 
continue to the day when Jesus comes back. Hiyo inamaanisha kwamba kazi ya Yesu Kristo na kazi ya Roho Mtakatifu itaendelea mpaka wakati Yesu atakaporudi. Because some people say, you know, nowadays there is no infilling of the Holy Spirit. Manake wengine wanasema kwamba siku hizi hakuna mjazi wa Roho Mtakatifu and no miracles and no prophecy. Na hakuna hakuna miujiza na hakuna unabii. But in second chapter of Acts it doesn't say it will end. It, was, it says it will go to the end when, uh, on the last day. And 1 Corinthians chapter 12 talk about the spiritual gifts. And it doesn't talk about an end. So it will continue. Inamaanisha kwamba inaendelea. And then Mark chapter 16 beginning at verse 15 na katika Marko 16 mstari wa 15 go to all creation and preach the gospel to all creation. Enda katika viumbe zote na ukahubiri injili katika viumbe vyote. All who, be, who all who believe and is and are baptized shall be saved. Yoyote atakayeamini na kubatizwa basi ataokolewa. And miracles will follow those who believe. Na ishara hizo zitawafuata wale wanaoamini. In Jesus name they cast out demons. Katika jina la Kristo Yesu mtafukuza mapepo. They lay on the sick and the sick. Mtawekelea wagonjwa mikono watapona. Now the Bible connect Miracles to the Holy Spirit. Biblia inaunganisha miujiza kwa Roho Mtakatifu. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12 we talk about the spiritual gifts being given by the Holy Spirit. Wa Korinto wa kwanza 12 nazungumza vipawa za roho zinavyopeana na Roho Mtakatifu. And the spiritual gifts include supernatural spiritual gifts. Na sasa vipawa za Roho Mtakatifu zinahusisha Zile vipawa za kipekee za Roho Mtakatifu like prophecy kama unabii special signs ishara zile za kipekee healing kuponya so the bible connect miracles to the holy spirit kwa hivyo biblia inaunganisha Roho Mtakatifu kwa miujiza and in mark chapter 16 katika marko 16 it says that there will be miracles to the end of the world inasema kwamba kutakuwa na miujiza katika mpaka mwisho mpaka dari wa ulimwengu and miracles will follow those who believe na ishara hizo zitawafuata wale wanaoamini that means the miracles Come from the Holy Spirit will continue to the end of the world. Inamanisha kwamba zile miujiza zinazotoka kwenye Roho Mtakatifu zitaendelea mpaka mwisho wa dari. So the work of the Holy Spirit will not stop until the end of the world. Kazi ya Roho Mtakatifu haitakoma mpaka mwisho wa dunia. So prophecies will not stop. Kwa hivyo unabii hautakoma. Now I personally come across some prophecies that are very accurate. My personal experience with some people. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to share some experience of myself. When I was persecuted in the traditional church, there were two prophets who do not know me. I was in a meeting and there was one woman I did not know. Tulikuwa kwenye mkutano tulikuwa na wanaume kulikuwa na mtu ambaye si kwa namjua but she knows someone i know lakini huyo mama anajua alikuwa anajua mtu ambaye mimi namjua she talks to this person that she knows akazungumza na huyo mtu ambaye anamjua and i was standing there na nilikuwa nimesimama pale and then she turned to me and said na akanigeukia akaniambia i want to pray for you nataka nikuombee and then when she prayed for me, she said, alisema, You are facing great difficulty. Una kumbana na hali ngumu. You have to have much prayer to support yourself. Ni lazima uwe na maombi kwa ajili ya kujisaidia wewe. It was a time when I was facing persecution. Ulikuwa ni wakati ambapo nilipokuwa napitia katika hali ya dhiki. And there was another prophet in the meeting. Na sasa tulikuwa na manabii wengi katika ule umati. There were hundreds of people waiting for ministry. Kulikuwa na watu maelfu ambao walikuwa katika hali ya kuhuduma. When he came to my church he said to me. Na walipo alipokuja walipokuja kwenye kanisa langu wakanambia. There are groups of people trying to attack you. Kuna vikundi vya watu ambao zinakufuata. So you have to prepare yourself. Ni lazima ujiandae. And then there were two times I received 
prophecy telling me to go international. Pia kuna nyakati mbili ama vipindi mbili nilivyokuwa nimepokea una nilipo anza kupokea unabi kwanza nitaenda kuhubiri injili kimataifa. At that time it seemed impossible. Na sasa wakati huo nilikuwa naona ni kama ni ngumu haiwezekani. The first person it was in a meeting the prophet was in a meeting. Aya kwanza kulikuwa na nabii aliyekuwa katika mkutano. Many people were in the meeting. Watu wengi walikuwa kwenye mkutano. He just pointed his finger at me and said come out. Alinyonyesha kidole akaniambia hebu njoo. And when I came out he said, "Na nilipotoka kwenye umati akaniambia, you are going to different nations. Utaenda kwenye mataifa tofauti. To bless different nations. Kubariki mataifa tofauti. At that time it seemed impossible. Na wakati huo nilikuwa naona ni kama haiwezekani. And at that time there was a one of my church member. Na wakati huo alikuwa ni mmoja wa washirika wake wa kanisa. At that time I to leave Hong Kong. Na nilisikwa muda nikaanza kuishi Hong Kong. And I thought I would not have a chance to come back or to go to different places. Na sasa nikaona kwamba nisitakuwa na wakati wa kutoka Hong Kong kwenda mahali kwingine. But this church member said I pray for you. Lakini huyu msikilizaji wa kanisa akasema kwamba nakuombea. And I saw you go around the world. Na nilipokuwa nakuombea nilikuona ukizunguka kwenye mataifa. And now this is coming true. Na sasa haya ninaona inafanyika sasa. Now I want to talk about a wrong use of prophecy. Nataka kuzungumza muza kuhusu kutumia vibaya unabii many people when they hear there is a prophet coming they will rush there wakati mwingi watu wanaposikia kwamba kuna mnabii anakuja wataenda kukusanyika pale and many of these people are not obeying god in many ways na hawa watu ambao wamekusanyika hapo sio watu wanaotii mungu they want to hear some words from the prophets wanataka kusikia maneno mapya kutoka kwenye mnabii what they want to hear are things like this vitu ambavyo wangependa kusikia ni vitu kama hizi god will give you a job Mungu atakupa kazi. God will give you money. Mungu atakupa pesa. God will give you a husband or wife. Mungu atakupa mume ama mke. God is very happy with you. Mungu ako na furaha na wewe. Now there are many people who want to go to see a prophet and hear past. Sasa watu wengi wamependa sana kwenda mahali kuna nabii ili kusikia unabii kama huo. The function of a prophet is not to give you false hopes. Kazi ya nabii sio kukupa lile tumaini la uongo or just to make you feel good. Ama kukufanya tu usikie vizuri. The prophet can point out the sins of people. Nabii inafaa awe mtu anayekemea dhambi za mtu or guide the direction of ministry. Ama kupeana mwelekeo katika huduma. So I encourage people who are seeking ministry, you can seek God for direction. Kwa hivyo mimi huwa naimiza watu ambao wanaotafuta mwelekeo katika huduma, watafuta mwelekeo kutoka kwa Mungu. At the same time the words of some prophet can help you to find the direction. Na pia wakati mwingine mambo ya nabii inaweza ikakufanya pia ukapata mwelekeo. But still the most important thing is that we follow God. Lakini la muhimu mno tafuate Mungu. And God will open the way for us. Na Mungu atufungulia njia. That now that you ask a question. Is there a place for prophecies? Eh mtu aliulia swali je, kuna sehemu ya unabii? There is a place. There is a place for prophecy. Kuna sehemu ya unabii. Prophets are to assist in the fivefold ministry. Nabii inafaa wasaidie katika huduma wa mpengele tano. So we will find direction of ministry. Ili kwamba wakapeane mwelekeo katika huduma. How to serve God more efficiently? Jinsi ya kutumikia Mungu kisawasawa. How to enter a higher level of ministry? Jinsi ya kuinua huduma kwenye hatua ya juu zaidi. That's the main purpose of prophecy. Hiyo ndio kazi muhimu ya ya nabii. It can remind people and help people turn, turn to God. Inaweza inaweza kumbusha watu kufuata Mungu zaidi. But all this reminder you can find in the Bible. Lakini haya makumbusho yote yamefungwa kwenye kifungu cha Biblia. Utayapata these people if they come to me, mimi hao watu wanapokuja kwangu, I will tell them I don't need prophets to tell you. And I want you kwamba mimi sihitaji nabii akwambie. The Bible already said Tayari Biblia ilikwisha kusema repent of the sins kwamba ukatubu dhambi zako na ukamrudie Mungu love God and obey God ukampende Mungu na ukamtii and he'll bless you na atakubariki you don't need a prophet to tell you hauhitaji nabii kukwambia but the prophet will guide the fivefold ministry to go a higher level lakini nabii atasaidia tu ule huduma wa 
pengele tano kwenda juu and some people they claim to be prophets na watu wengine huwa wanajitai kuwa manabii and they get many people to come na sasa wanaita watu wengi wanakuja and they say many prophets wanasasis wanasema unabii mwingi wa uongo and make the people feel good na hivi wafanye watu wasikie vizuri and they will give offering to them na sasa watapenda sadaka na nonono kwao this should not be the function of prophet hiyo sio kazi ya nabii Now let me tell you one time someone sent me asked me do I want to receive an email of a prophet of a church Kuna mtu aliyemtumia barua pepe inayozungumza kuhusu mafunuo ya Biblia ya kanisa so this question is in a famous charismatic church in Hong Kong Huyo mtu ako kwenye kanisa ya Kipentecote kule mji wa Hong Kong and I said to her I don't need that na haya a prophecy akamwambia kwamba mimi sihitaji unabii wako but she still said it to me lakini bado aliendelea kumtumia and i opened it and read na sasa alipofungua ile barua na kusoma the first line is said mstari wa kwanza alisema this year god is going to give money to the people in this church mm-hmm. mwaka huu mungu anaenda kupeana kila mtu pesa kwa washirika wa kanisa yako When I read that I said this is not how the Bible talks. Niliposoma haya nilisema kwamba haya sio ambayo Biblia inazungumzia. This is not how God talks. Hii sio vile Mungu alinavyo. God will say seek first the kingdom of God and I'll give you all these things. Mungu anasema kwamba utafutini kwanza ufalme wa Mungu na mambo mengine yote nitawazidishieni. It doesn't just say you belong to this church this year you're going to receive a lot. Haisemi kwamba kwa sababu wewe ni mshirika wa kanisa hili mwaka huu utapata pesa nyingi. So I think that when prophets do that they are you know they're not following God's word. Na sikiria kwamba wakati nabii wanapofanya hivyo hawafuati neno la Mungu. So I I'm going to say I I know they are prophets. Ndaenda kusema kwamba najua kuna manabii and prophets are important. Na manabii ni wa muhimu but there are many false prophets. Lakini kuna manabii wengi wa uongo siku hizi. So be very careful. Lazima uwe makini. Now the woman minister I told you about who goes to heaven often and actually every day when she prays you can go to heaven there was one minister woman minister that i know that whenever she prays you god takes her to heaven ako na na huduma moja katika huduma ambaye ni mwanamke huwa anasema kwamba kila wakati anapoomba mungu anambeba na mpeleka juu mbinguni that this woman really has a very close relationship with god huyu mama ako na uhusiano wa karibu na mungu and she really submit to God. Na kwa kweli ananyenyekea sana kwa ajili ya Mungu. She prays for a way for the Lord kneeling on the floor three or four hours a day. Yeye huwa anaomba zaidi amepiga chini magoti kwa muda wa masaa matatu ama manne. And God started to take her to heaven. Na Mungu akaanza kumpeleka mbinguni. And her go, you know, her trip to heaven is verified by two fam- uh, three families i went there to videotape the three families na haya mambo alienda kuchukua video kwa familia tatu kujinzi vile mungu anavyopeleka watu mbinguni that she saw two christians who died and went to heaven kwamba kulikuwa na wakristo wawili waliokufa na wakaenda mbinguni and then she went to heaven and saw them ya kwamba na alienda mbinguni na akawaona now one of the uh, One of the Christian that she saw in heaven also when when he died she went there and then immediately when she prayed she saw two angels with this with the soul of this Christian. Na pia sasa wakati huyu Mkristo ambaye alikuwa anamuona kule mbinguni akipelekwa alipokufa huyu mama wakati mwingine alipokuwa anaomba aliona malaika wawili wameshikilia nafsi ya yule mtu ambaye aliyekufa akaenda mbinguni. And then the Christian talked to this woman minister because she saw him na sasa huyu mtu alienda mbinguni ameshikiliwa na malaika akamwambia huyu mama aliyekuwa muhuduma and this christian was filled with joy na sasa huyu mkristayo amejazwa na furaha and he told the woman minister na akamwambia mwanamke huyu muhudumu tell my family i'm very happy now ambia familia yangu don't grief don't grief for me niko na furaha zaidi wasilie kwa ajili yangu and a second thing he said na cha pili alichosema tell my daughter i'm very happy with her marriage ambia binti yangu ninafurahishwa sana na ndoa yake so this woman minister told 
the daughter. Your Sasa, father said he's very happy with your marriage. Sasa huyu mama muhuduma akaambia binti ya huyu mama aliyekufa kwamba mamako anasema kwamba amefurahishwa sana na ndoa yake. And then this daughter said you must have seen him. Na sasa huyu binti akasema kwa kweli lazima wewe umemuona because this is a family secret that you don't know. Manake haya ni ni hizi ni siri za familia zenye hawajui. And then she also saw this Christian in heaven later too. Na tena kisha baadaye akaona wa Kristo kule mbinguni. And then there is another uh, Christian who died and went to heaven. Na sasa kuna Mkristo mwingine aliyekufa na akaenda mbinguni. And then she saw him and then he talked to her. Na tena akamwona alafu wakaongeleshana. And she uh, he told her, "Go to my wife and tell her to pray more and serve God more." Na sasa huyu jamaa aliyekufa akamtuma huyu muunduma aende aambie bibi yake aliyebaki kwamba aombe zaidi na akamtumikie Mungu zaidi. He also told his woman minister. Na pia akamwambia huyu mama muunduma, "Your mother talked to me and my wife a lot about you that she liked you very much. So don't misunderstand your mother." Okay. He told her to tell that tell her that your mother has talked to me and my wife a lot that she is very proud of you very happy with you akamwambia kwamba mamangu ameniambia kwamba mama yako amesema kwamba amefurahishwa sana na anajivunia kwa ajili ya maisha yako so she went back and asked her wife of the Christian na sasa akaenda akauliza yule bibi wa yule Mkristo did my mother tell you a lot about me and say she's happy with me je mama yangu alikwambia kwamba alikwambia mambo yote kuniuso akasema kwamba anafurahishwa and the wife said you must have seen him in heaven because there's something between the two of us and your mother no one knows about it na akamwambia ni lazima uwe umemwona kule mbinguni manake haya mambo yako tu katikati yangu na familia hii and also she went to her daughter her, her mother na tena akarudi kwa mama yake and asked her mother the same thing akamuuliza mama lile lile swali tena and the mother said that's true na mama yake akamwambia ni ukweli and also god told this woman minister another thing na sasa huyu mungu akamwambia huyu mama mhuduma he said repent for your ancestor who has killed many people ukatubu kwa ajili ya babu zako ambao waliua watu wengi so she came back and asked the mother did one of my ancestors kill many people sasa akakuja tena akamuuliza mama yake je kati ya mababu yangu kuna yule yote aliyeua mtu and then the the mother uh, the mother said yes your great grandfather was the one who betrayed the chinese in the japanese war and he took a gun and killed many people akamwambia kwamba katika zile vita ambavyo wa japanese walikuwa wanapigana babu yako ishisho ni shie sasa ndiye aliye toa siri za wapiganaji na mpaka akachukua ile ile bunduki akaanza kuua wachinisi wengine so sometimes he took the gun and go out at night and and nobody knows how many people were killed na wakati mwingine alikuwa anachukua bunduki usiku akitembea huko na hakuna hata mtu anayejua ni wangapi aliyowaua. So God revealed that to her to pray to repent for that. Na sasa Mungu alikuwa anamfunulia kwamba akapate kutubu kwa ajili ya hayo. Now when this woman minister went to heaven, God showed her strategy. Na sasa wakati huyu mama alipopelekwa mbinguni, Mungu alimwonyesha mpango kabambe wa huduma. When she went into ministry sometimes God woke her up at 1 a.m. and woke her up to pray. Na hata wakati alipokuwa katika huduma Mungu alikuwa anamuamsha kama saa 7 usiku kumwambia kwamba hebu kamuka ukaombe. And told her the needs of the group and what need to be done to bring revival. Na alikuwa anampa anamuonyesha mahitaji ya lile kundi ili kwamba sasa naye akakuja akapate kule hudumia sawa sawa. And then when she followed God's directives there was great work of God. Na sasa alikuwa anafuata zile ule mwelekeo jinsi Mungu alivyokuwa anampa. Like one time God told her na siku nyingine pia Mungu akamwambia tell the people repent of the sins of killing people. Ambia watu watuku dhambi za kuua wengine. So 
She couldn't understand how come Christians kill people. So she brought the word of God to them, you know, if we have killed people, repent. And there were many women who confessed the sin of abortion, that they have killed their babies. And she would not have known, it's God who told her. So this is the function of prophets. To bring revival. To bring the kingdom of God. To bring the work of God. And not just to give some false happy feelings. Now all Christians hear the voice of God if you, if you obey God. All Christians can develop the gift of prophecy. But some Christians have stronger gift. Now what do I mean when, you, when all Christians hear the voice of God? Now Jesus said that too. My sheep hear my voice. And in the book of Isaiah, it says that you will hear a voice from behind you and tell you what is the right way to go there. And in different places, talk about that. You know, if you honor. Honor God, follow God, He will guide you in all your ways. So you can write this down. The first voice all Christians hear, the first voice all Christians hear, the first voice is God will tell us about our sins. Have you heard the voice tell you your sins? If you have to raise your hand. Can you raise your hand if you have that voice? Not necessarily a voice, just the conviction inside. You know you have committed. That is a sign of Christian. And then the next step, you, I mean, actually not the next step. Every Christian will hear the voice to trust in Jesus. To rely on Jesus. And also we will receive voice to say, obey God in a certain way. Preach the gospel to a certain person. Or you receive ideas how to teach. Now for me, I receive many messages of how to teach. And there are people who have the gift to hear the voice of God. I have some people around me like that. They can ask God and then God will speak to them when they can hear the voice. Now this is a gift. But the person must keep himself holy. Because if he's he can hear the voice of God. He can also hear the voice of Satan. If he lives in sin, then he will also hear the voice of Satan. Now when you hear the voice of God, sometimes it's when you are not thinking about that sort of thing. Suddenly the idea came to you. Like for me when I came, I forgot to apply for the visa. Alisa how ku the visa. Alisa how ku kata visa. Visa. And when I remember, 
I think it's God remind, reminding me. Na alipo alipo kumbuka kwamba haja apply visa anaamini kwamba ni Mungu aliyemkumbusha. It was the day before hell. I should leave. Ilifaa apande ndege kama kesho lakini leo ndo sasa ananipigia simu kwamba hajakata visa and I check online and find that I need a visa. Na alipoangalia kwenye mtandao akaona kwamba ai ninahitaji niwe na visa. So I apply online. Sasa aka apply visa kupitia kwa mtandao. But it would take time. Lakini ikachukua muda. And then the next day a thought came to me. Na sasa siku ya pili wazo likanijia. Send an email to ask for the time. Do, does the person know what time it will come? It was like he kamtia kwamba atume barua pepe ya kuuliza je hiyo visa inaweza kuja lini? And then the person responded in a letter in an email and said, "Na tena mtu mwingine akamtumia barua pepe wakati huo akasema, if you cannot get a visa on time, you can get the real visa on arrival." Kama hauwezi ukapata visa kwa wakati unaofaa utakapofika Kenya utapata visa yako imetengenezwa iko tayari. So this is God helping me in this situation. Huyu ni Mungu aliyemsaidia katika hali hiyo. Sometimes you just have thoughts suddenly come up to you. Kuna wakati mwingine pia wazo lingine la uongo linakukujia. You have forgotten your umbrella. Umesahau mwavuli. You have forgot to put the zipper on the on the backpack. Oh, umesahau kufunga ile zip ya bag. My wife has this experience. Bibi yangu ameshasudia haya. She was trying to resolve a problem in a school. Alikuwa anajaribu kusulisha tatizo kwenye shule and then in the dream she saw how the problem can be solved. Katika ndoto aliona jinsi Lina tatizo ama aliona njia ya kusuluhisha ile shida and she tried next day it worked na alipoamka asubuhi akajaribu kutumia ile mbinu aliyoiona katika ndoto ikafanyika hivyo so listen pay attention to the voice that comes to your heart ni lazima uwe makini na sauti inayokuja kwenye roho yako but it's very important that you don't worry and have negative thoughts na ni ya muhimu kwamba usiwe mtu wa kukua na shauku na pia usikuwe na mawazo mengi. Be quiet and be still and you can hear the voice of God more. Wewe nyambaze na utulie utaweza kusikia sauti ya Mungu. But you check with the word of God whether this is scriptural. Lakini neno la Mungu sasa ni lazima utaliapata kwenye maandiko maana ni maandiko whether what you hear is biblical. Lakini kusikia wakati mwingine inakuwa ni ngumu. Okay. So this is something we can all develop. Hiki ni kitu ambacho sisi sote tunaweza tukachangia tukakuwa nacho that you have time in the morning ni kwamba uchukue muda wako kwa Mungu and you just pray for the kingdom of God na unaomba kwa ajili ya utukufu wa Mungu or you love God ama unampenda Mungu and then once in a while thoughts will come into your mind na sasa wakati mwingine mawazo yataanza kuja kwenye akili ni mwako if you worry you won't pay attention to the voice kama utakuwa mtu wa kufadhaika basi mawazo mema hayatakuja kwenye akili yako you are quiet and without burdens na kama umenyamaza hauna matukizo then you can hear the voice easier utasikia hiyo sauti kiurahisi